It's a thrill to watch a seed you plant grow and develop, taking on a life of its own independent of your creative will. Today, I'm collaborating with Sega and Amplitude Studios to inscribe the story of my own civilization in the vast, sprawling world of humankind, where my small tribe contends to found a great nation for fame and prosperity among countless others through the ages. So under the opening eyelids of the morn, we embark upon our first task and seek a fertile land with natural defenses that will nourish and protect our burgeoning city-state for ages to come. The first humans were hunter-gatherers, living off of the land, but nomadic. The advantage to this lifestyle? Survival. The disadvantage? There was no opportunity to permanently establish a governing body to achieve more than independent labors of individuals. Our story begins in the Neolithic era. Who knows what year it is? Who knows where it is? Of all things, it begins with a search. Now, living as homeless vagabonds, we commence our embarkment with an investigation of the land. Of course, that means a lot of auto-exploring. We search for signs of rare resources to jumpstart us in our cultural journey. We find ruins of ancient civilizations, and what appeared to be a larger landmass turns out to be a peninsula. As it turns out, the world is a lot wider than we gave it credit for, and we open our eyes to the ocean, blue and true. While this would yield sight lines and harbors, it'll be many years before we can establish sustainable fishing and docks along the rocky coasts. We discover nuts. In our era, every resource found is a unique opportunity. Having observed the familiar signs of new developments from other civilizations nearby, we decide the time has come to establish our own culture, our own city-state, or else be forgotten in the waste of ages. Our own city-state. An exciting day and the cause for merriment and gaiety. Go, my smooth-brained people. You will be the vessel of my will. If we go inland, we'll have the cover of mountains and reap resources from the bountiful fields and rocky mountains nearby. For now, we patiently bide our time enjoying the feel of grass in the lush country fields, the smell of the mountain, and even the view of the ocean. Fantastic. You may cast your gaze out upon the ocean and exclaim, Wowzers, look at all the fish. But you would be absolutely wrong. Fish still haven't been invented yet. The great political philosophers theorize that two hands working in conjunction, as it turns out, accomplish more than two working separately. So we just let our scouts poop out a city this turn, then we'll move them on for probably hundreds of years. Early days of civilization and specialization commence. After collecting more resources, our military grows, and the city nears completion. Though clearly, a neighbor will limit us already from the beginning, and it's up to us to decide whether we'll make friends or enemies, or frenemies. We discover a wonder, a natural miracle, seated just beside a copper deposit, while our neighbor will hem us in, we'll have the valuable resources there at the mountain. And we complete our first outpost. But what's this? There in the south. Only tribes people for now. But it's still an unknown party, and we greet it with necessary suspicion. Agrarian life commences in the city, and advances in agriculture allow us to grow our population without moving constantly. In part, we've cast aside the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. On the outskirts, our warriors rove, in search of food to bring back to the city and other spoils. Our tribes people are fruitful and multiply. Some we send off, others we use to fight. Notoriety and growth on the horizon. We invent the Naruto run. We use it to get to the sanctuary. It made us faster, don't question it. Things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle in the words of Abraham Lincoln. It seems there are other nearby tribes, but there's still a good hold of land we can take. Now, what a wider world we've entered, after all. At last, we can set off our scouts to learn of our neighbors. Some of them have already found valuable resources. Albeit, they've chosen to live off in a frozen waste. Their lives are just garbage. Enemies enter our territory, trying to set up an outpost in our land. Lives are lost, but at the benefit of future nations. We are strong at home. While it may seem like a small win, the echoes of this victory will reverberate out into history and shower down blessings on our kin. We continue our run of pillaging victorious. Now here we've found a land worth taking. Mercury, lead, all we'll need in the future. We have been ridiculously fruitful, slaying tens of woolly mammoths and keeping enemies out of domestic land they would seek to call their own. With that, we've reached the ancient era, adopting the Egyptian culture for its productivity. 
I'll fit right in. Knowing we are destined to become an expansive people, stretching over many nations, we adopt polytheism as our system of faith. Memphis is founded. Oh, frabjous day. We immediately set out to build the pyramids in a forest beneath a mountain. Simultaneously, a new outpost will be founded just over the ridge at the head of the Nile. Research begins on a calendar to learn when we are. The Egyptians and the Olmecs, our neighbors to the south, are destined to be in a warlike tangle. We were destined to be enemies from the start. Support grows for a war with the Olmecs. Out and out disputes begin. Much is acknowledged, war support grows. The Harappans to our north propose a trade treaty. This will aid in our war against the Olmecs. Socially, we're impeccable. We use our insane charm. Glorious, glorious, let it be so. To woo the Harappan leader. Let us raise a glass. Pyramids for everyone. At last, we've researched a calendar. It's time to claim the pyramids of Giza. After all, we have already two pyramids. Kalu Kale. We have claimed the pyramids. But it will take a long ass time. The year turns out to be 4797 before the common era. Our cities flourish and grow. Beasts are expelled. By this time, the Naruto run has proliferated. It is now ubiquitous throughout our society. A new city center appears at an extremely advantageous position. They are hidden in the mountains, on top of a ridge, and at the end of a river. An ideal strategic location, soon to be connected to our major city-state. Now it isn't we who live in the shadow of the Olmecs, but the Olmecs who live in the shadow of we. We meet Edgar Allan Poe, the Nubian leader, and improve our trade relations. Using my outrageous social skills, there will be consequences to this. And the sphere of our influence grows to Thebes. We expand down into the fertile plains for our farms. Mostly through forced labor, more pyramids are constructed. The city expands further south. And since our civilization is already so industrious, we make it yet even more industrious. As it turns out, polluting massively with sawmills over all of the forests is the best way to build a civilization. We fight a bear and win. The years from 3300 and onward see the steady rise of prosperity in proto-Egyptian society. Architecturally, our society flourishes with ever more exceedingly elaborate, absurd buildings used to worship and house the dead. Exploration speeds in pace through the conscription of strong manly men. Yes, our nation is feminine, being lush and fertile but also manly because of all the squares and straight lines utilized in our architectural patterns. Scholars and historians will discuss and even argue about the origins of our art style for years to come. We make our way to the ocean and wapow, we have a harbor. Amazing, right? Hundreds of years in the click of a button. After that, we enter the classical era. We decide that we don't vibe with Egypt anymore and we become Greeks. The Greeks were firm believers in technology. With them, everything counts as science. Resultantly, science flourished. And our fields were greener and truer, and our oceans were bluer. Ah, the Greek era. Everything that we believed before was a lie, it turns out. Money! Zeus! These were the things that we aspired to. Research became quite absurd, taking only one turn to do literally anything, although our society wasn't accomplishing anything whatsoever. But we had philosophy. We literally invented philosophy while massacring all of our own people. There's a stupidly overpowered ability all Greek cities have that allows them to chop down more trees to gain more knowledge. That is, turn your industrial power directly into research. Want to learn how to create nukes? It's simple, really. Just chop down an entire forest and the knowledge will be magically transmitted into your smooth brain. In the meantime, we also brutally murdered many of the local peoples. And then we built forts to keep them out of their own lands. We built a temple to worship Zeus, the most morally virtuous of the gods. Everyone was completely happy for a thousand years. Math, science, and technology led the way. Everyone else loved us, and our allies couldn't get enough. I must ask my people. This will be a blessing for all parties. I accept. Tremendous! Tremendous! I had become more than just friends with Agamemnon. Please to accept your proposal, friend. Marvelous, like the first rays of daylight. While I normally rush to technology, there's a great novelty in modernity about the entire classical era. I have a notion which would benefit us both. Between the years 1100 and 1000 BCE, we got a look at the wider world. 
We got around and were open to new experiences even. If it means harmony, I accede. You fascinate me. Certainly there was the temptation to simply declare war on everyone else. But if you're like me, whenever you play a 4X game, most of your time is quietly spent twiddling your thumbs and researching until eventually you develop nukes while all your allies are still riding around on horseback. Ah, uh, ships. Ahoy, matey. Here we go off onto the blue. The next step as a society was to explore what lay beyond our borders. The old world was behind us, and a new one ahead. Suddenly, the curiosity that defined the ancient era was rekindled anew, and a renaissance of exploration and love of learning blossomed at sea, the new frontier. There's something special about being the first one to touch the water out there. And so there, on new shores, we planted our seed, a fresh island, untainted by man. Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. Who could say it better than old Bill, after all? With the age of maritime exploration to the new world in vogue around 600 BCE, and the advent of fighter jets and stealth bombers just around the corner, I began to feel a sense of, well, anachronism. History was all jumbled up. Some people were knights in shining armor fighting for King Arthur, while other people were shooting each other with assault rifles. As in all 4X games, my final task was decided. To cheese the AI until I could brutally declare war on all nine of my neighbors simultaneously and launch surprise nuclear bomb presents to them. So with one last swift motion, we readied ourselves for the age of Aquarius. Ah, welcome to the future. Two thousand years have passed in between the last frame and this one. I am Lord of Korea. The Communist Korea. Um, history doesn't always work out the way you intend it, does it? Well, no one's allowed to question it because I have a natural right to rule. Naturally. I still worship Zeus in 1465. And I force all of Korea to worship Zeus. Wowzers, a major thanks to Sega and Amplitude Studios for sponsoring this. If you want to try it out yourself, go ahead and click the link down below. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian, and you're you. Until we meet again next time.